Let's go through the exercise of uh, cloning a homework assignment onto our computer and then making changes and using Git to commit those changes and push those changes back up to GitHub. Now, what I've got already open is my terminal. I've got my uh, web browser set to the homework assignment that I'm interested in, and I also have my text editor available. I'm doing this on a Mac, but the commands and the process is identical whether you're using Linux, Macintosh, or some other type of Unix-like system. So before we get started, you need to have a GitHub account. I've already created a GitHub account. I've already signed in. My username is mshafe-demo, and that's to show you how this works using an account that's similar to yours. So once you've created a GitHub account, we need to then set up our Git client. So I'll come to my terminal, and before doing anything else, I'm going to configure Git. This is necessary because um, if I don't have my email address and my name configured, when it comes time to do uh, the pushes and the commits and everything else, it's going to complain. So this is a very, oh, and I did a mistake already. Uh, the first command, I misspelled global. There we go. And let's do the other one, which is not my email address, but my name. And please use your Cal State Fullerton email address. It really helps us uh, differentiate different students when we have to look at uh, the Git logs and things like that. So once I've done that, I've configured um, Git. And it is just this command and that command. That's all you have to type on the command line. You only need to do this once unless you're using the virtual computing lab. Again, you only need to do this once unless you're using the virtual computing lab. If you're using the virtual computing lab, you must do this every time you sign in. Otherwise, you just need to do this once. And how can you check to see if it worked? Well, if you type cat tilde and dot git config, you'll see exactly what we typed on the command line inside that file. It should only be three lines. Great, so let's go over this. You've got your GitHub account, you signed in, you're using your Cal State Fullerton email address with it, if you're not, just add your email address. You've got your git config file set up. Now, let's get to our homework. So I am pretending that I'm in Computer Science 120, and I'm going to use this homework assignment. So my instructor has given this homework assignment with a git classroom, GitHub classroom link that I click. And when I get to this page, it's saying, hey, you know, this is your first time using GitHub Classroom, and you have a GitHub account. You're already signed in. In fact, it tells you what account you're signed into. It's asking, is it okay to connect your GitHub account with this GitHub Classroom application? And in this case, yes, you want to authorize it. Wonderful. So now I'm being prompted. I'm, uh, I'm being prompted by GitHub to say, would you like to accept Lab 00 of Computer Science 120? Uh, and yeah, I want to do it. So I accept this assignment. And it just takes a second for GitHub to copy the template and put it into my account. Excellent. So now I've got that repository. This is the link to the repository. And my assignment is due, oh gosh, it's due today. So I better get working on it right now. This is what my repository looks like. Let's take a quick tour of the important parts. These are the files in the repository. There's a git ignore, readme.md, and a hello world.cpp. Um, my instructor, myself, but a different account, created it. And the readme file, this file right here, is actually shown to us as a web page, which makes it really easy to read. So I, I suggest that you read it from top to bottom, left to right, uh, and read everything and understand it. Now is the opportunity to ask a professor questions about what's going on with your assignment, because your, your instructor typically will put really good information in the readme about what you need to do. So let's imagine that I've read that very carefully. I understand what I'm supposed to do. <clears throat> uh, the other thing that I want to draw your attention to is that there's this green button. If I want to get the code onto my computer, I, I want to copy this URL. <coughs> Pardon me. I want to copy this URL and use the terminal to make a copy of that code. So I'm going to click this clipboard icon. It's now been copied. Where do I put it on my computer? Well, there's a number of great places where you can put it, but 
on my computer, I'm going to make a directory uniquely for my work in Computer Science 120. So MKDIR creates that directory, and if I type ls, I can see that it was created. Now I can use cd to go into that directory. If I type pwd, you can see I'm now in that directory. Whenever I make a directory, it remembers it, so it's not like I have to do this over and over again. Now I want to grab that code from GitHub and get it onto my computer. So I'm going to use the git clone command, and I'm going to use this URL right here. So I've just copied and pasted. So I've copied this URL and pasted over here in front of the git clone command. When I do that, it's going to prompt me for my username and my password. Now you might say, I don't see anything being typed, but do you hear my keyboard? I'm typing. So it's just not going to show it on the screen. That's completely normal. And if I typed it correctly, it's going to pull that code down. So if I type ls, you can see there's a new directory there. If I want to go inside the directory, I type cd and give the directory name and type ls. And now I see the contents of this repository. Look, the readme.md, there's the readme.md. The hello world.cpp, and there's the hello world.cpp. The dot git ignore, I don't see that. Well, it's actually hidden. If I do a ls-a, you can see it's right there. This special directory is where git keeps all its secret information. So please don't touch anything in there. All right, so I've got that onto my computer. I've read the instructions, and now I want to get to work. So I need my text editor. With my text editor, whether it's Atom, Emacs, VI, or VS Code, I need to open that hello world.cpp file. So I'm going to go to my home directory. I'm going to look for the Computer Science 120 folder I found. There's my repository, and I'm going to open that cpp file. Alternatively, from the command line, you could have typed Atom hello world.cpp, for instance, and that would have done the same thing. I just went through the menu so it would be clear of how I'm navigating my file system. Let me make this text a little larger. Oops. Now I know the instructions had a lot of information about what to do in the program. I'm just going to make a couple modest changes so that you can see how we can use git. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my name in it and my email address. Great. If I come over back to the terminal, I type git status, you can see nothing's changed. That's odd, because I did write something in the file. I see it right here, but I don't see any changes over here. Oh, I know what happened. Look, my text editor is telling me that I didn't save the file. I'm going to go to the file menu, select save, and see that that dot's gone. Now if I type git status, it says it's modified. This is a really important thing that we have to remember to do, that as we make changes, we have to remember to save the file. This is very different from, say, Google Docs or things on your smartphone or smart tablet where it magically saves it for you. We as programmers have to remember to save things. So now that it's modified, I want to commit it to my repository. So um, I need to add it. So I say git add hello world.cpp. I type git status. Oh, great. So it's gone from red, being modified, changes not stage for commitment, and then I did git add, now it's green, changes to be committed. That doesn't mean it's been committed. It means that it's been scheduled or staged for commitment. To commit, I need to say commit. And it's really a good idea. In fact, some instructors make it mandatory that you write a good message, which is a log message. What did I do? I added my name as a comment to the top of the file. Great. Now I also need to specify the file that I'm talking about. Perfect. Worked out. So if I now type git status, I don't see any red, don't see any green, don't see any other color, but I do notice that it says your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. That means that what I have on my computer is different than what is at GitHub by one commit. If I want to send that commit, to GitHub, I type git push. Ah, it's prompting me for my username and password again for GitHub. So I type in my username for GitHub, and then again the password. Remember, it's not going to show you the password or any stars or dots or anything. So you just have to be very careful when you type it. And let's say you mess up. I'm going to mess up on purpose. And it's going to fail authentication. So I just have to do it over again. This time I'm going to be very careful and type in my password. 
Ah, great, it worked. When I get my prompt back and I don't see an error message, then that means it worked. Now, you want to verify it, and that's the right idea. You come back to um, GitHub in your web browser, and you look and you say, nothing's really changed. Well, that's because we have to refresh the page. So I'm going to refresh this page. Look at this. One minute ago is when I made this change to this file, and you can see the comment I made. And in fact, if I click on the file, you can see the file's different from what it was originally. Another really cool thing about GitHub is it allows you to visualize the history. And I can go and click on these to see the different versions of my file as I've changed it over history. I'll leave that for you to explore. So you can see that I can use push to send it back over here. Let's go back to our terminal and our text editor and make a few more changes. So I've got my name at the top. I'm going to say hello, hello Michael. And I'm not satisfied with it only doing it once. So I'm going to say, oh, let me fix this. How about we do it four times? I'm just writing a loop just for fun. So we can print out my name a whole bunch of times because the sweetest sound in the world is hearing your own name. So let me save that. Notice that that's saved. This time I use the keyboard shortcut of Command S on my Mac. On most, time, most computers, Control S. You can always look on the file menu and see that that's the keyboard shortcut. It's good to remember these things. Another good tip is to keep the windows from overlapping so that you can easily move your focus between them. If I type git status, oh, it's modified. Let's go through the process one more time. So that's git add hello world.cpp, git status to check if it worked. It worked. Then I do git commit. Don't forget the comment. Um, I added a loop and changed world to my name. Then don't forget to give the name of the file. That's always something I forget sometimes is to remember to put the name of the file there as well. Great, that worked too. Uh, let's make some more changes. How about um, another print message? I'll put another print message there. Now, over here, I did make a commit. If I type git status, You'll notice that's modified again because I added this additional line on line 12. So let's go through the process one more time. I'm going to git add hello world.cpp. And I know it worked, so I'm not going to do the git status this time. You don't need to do the status every single time, just whenever you feel like it. It's a way of knowing what's going on. Um, new print statement to ask your opinion about. Plus plus. Also, notice I'm putting these in quotes. It's very important that you remember to put quotes there. Otherwise, it won't look like a comment or, or a message to git. Excellent, that worked too. If I type git status now, look at this. It says, my branch is ahead of origin master by two commits. Two commits because one commit was where I made that for loop, this one right here, and then I committed it. And then the next one was when I made this message here and print it out. So you don't need to push every single time, but it's a really good idea that you make really small changes and commit them as you go along. Now let's imagine that I'm done with my homework assignment. I want to push it. Log in again. Excellent. So now if I reload this, you can see that I made all these changes 44 seconds ago. And you can see the comment, that I, the last comment I made. And I can view the contents of the file like this. Whatever you put into your Git repository is what your instructor is going to see. But you're saying you want proof. Well, the way we can get proof is to clone it again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another direct. I'm going to go out one directory. So I'm not in the same directory. This is a very important part of this. I'm going to make another directory and call it test. I'll call it something better, test checkout. Now I'm going to go inside of test checkout. And now I'm going to clone my repository one more time. So I copy this URL, and I paste it here. I got to log in again.
Great. So here is the same program that I had a second ago. Yeah, it's the same. Okay, so my professor, my instructor, is going to see the same exact thing that I saw. But I forgot to test it. Let me just test it one last time to make sure that everything's going to work. Excellent. So that covers it. We've learned how to use um, CD, LS, git status, uh, git, uh, git add, git commit, and git push. That's all you need to know to be able to do your homework assignments.